So let's just acknowledge the obvious. Donald Trump is a terrible president. He is a mentally unstable person. He creates a lot of chaos and political instability. I get someone's instinct to dislike Donald Trump and to not want him to be president. Trust me, I, I feel it too. I don't like Donald Trump. I want him gone as soon as possible. With that being said, though, I feel as if it's really important, and I shouldn't have to say this, uh, that we don't go out of our way to rehabilitate the destructive legacies of past presidents who were objectively worse than Donald Trump. So I understand that, like, you know, Donald Trump may make you yearn for the days when we had a more normal president, at least when it comes to their mental faculties and ability to govern and just acting like an adult. However, you don't have to normalize someone like George W. Bush just so, you know, the juxtaposition between Trump and Bush seems that much more absurd. You can just say Trump is bad and not rehabilitate George W. Bush, but unfortunately, that is what a lot of liberals, namely liberal elites, are doing. In order to resist Donald Trump and make him look bad, they're trying to make it seem as if Bush wasn't that bad, when in actuality, Bush was far more destructive than Donald Trump. I'm still holding a grudge against Ellen, who used to be, you know, an LGBTQ plus hero to me, because she invited George W. Bush on her show, and they were dancing, they were getting all buddy-buddy, you know, he uh, gave her a kiss on the cheek, and that was really destructive. She basically told all of her viewers that George W. Bush wasn't so bad, because look at Donald Trump now. So we should have been thankful for the days of George W. Bush. That was problematic, but you know, I chalked it up to, all right, she's just apolitical. She doesn't know shit about politics, but that wasn't a one-off because over the weekend, there was an image of her that went viral hanging out with George W. Bush at a football game. You know, it was as if 2001 through 2009 never happened. I guess she uh, is not recalling what happened and how he attacked her identity as president. And on top of that, actress Rosie O'Donnell tweeted out support for Bush saying, how comforting to see a real president. Never thought his image would move me. So come on, Republicans, call bullshit on Trump. Save democracy, this ain't no movie. That sentiment alone, like if we were just friends and I were talking to Rosie O'Donnell and she told me that, I'd think she was an idiot. I'd probably call her stupid for saying that. But it's not like they're just thinking this. They are actively broadcasting to the world. Rosie O'Donnell just told her 1.1 million Twitter followers that, you know, George W. Bush is a real president. He's great. Donald Trump is bad. George Bush is good. And whatever problems you had with George W. Bush, it pales in comparison to the issues that we have with Donald Trump. Well, guess what? That is dead fucking wrong. And like, I can't help but think, what is wrong with liberals? Trump has broken their brains beyond repair. And especially to see elite liberals, members from the LGBTQ community like Ellen and Rosie O'Donnell say this. It's just, it's mind boggling to me. He doesn't like you. You're gay. He hates you because you are gay, period. And we're not even scratching the surface. George W. Bush destroyed the Eighth Amendment, violated international law by torturing human beings, torturing them. This is the man that signed the Patriot Act into law, which eroded the Fourth Amendment, okay? Eroded the Fourth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. He was the architect of the drone wars that Obama ended up expanding, which led to thousands of civilians dying in Pakistan, Yemen, Afghanistan, Somalia, Iraq. This is the man who has the blood of one million dead Iraqis on his hands. His regime change effort there literally catalyzed a bloody civil war. And we are still fucking there. And you're saying, this is a great person. This is a real president. What the fuck is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? Are you out of your mind? This murderer is a good president? The only feeling that you should get when you see George W. Bush roaming around freely enjoying football games is rage. Rage at the fact that he's not rotting in prison for the rest of his life. He should be at the Hague right now in a fucking jail cell until the day he dies because of all the blood he has on his hands. But yet you're hanging out with him honoring him just to get Donald Trump. And on top of that, the idiocy of people like Ellen and Rosie O'Donnell is honestly mind-boggling to me. He literally ran his entire 2004 campaign against you. Against you. Do you not understand that? He ran a campaign on banning same-sex marriage. And no, he didn't just want to pass a law like, you know, the Defense of Marriage Act, 
where you ban it federally, he wanted a constitutional amendment so you could never, ever marry your wife who attended that football game with you, Ellen. Do you not get this? In fact, I'm going to play a little clip because I guess that liberals who are older than me who should remember this more clearer uh, need a history lesson. This is what he said in a radio address about gay marriage. He wanted a constitutional amendment to ban your marriage, Ellen. Today, I want to explain why I support the Marriage Protection Amendment and why I'm urging Congress to pass it and send it to the states for ratification. Marriage is the most enduring and important human institution honored and encouraged in all cultures and by every religious faith. Ages of experience have taught us that the commitment of a husband and a wife to love and to serve one another promotes the welfare of children and the stability of society. Marriage cannot be cut off from its cultural, religious, and natural roots without weakening this good influence on society. Government, by recognizing and protecting marriage, serves the interests of all. In our free society, people have the right to choose how they live their lives. And in a free society, decisions about such a fundamental social institution as marriage should be made by the people, not by the courts. The American people have spoken clearly on this issue, both through their representatives and at the ballot box. In 1996, Congress approved the Defense of Marriage Act by overwhelming bipartisan majorities in both the House and Senate and President Clinton signed it into law. Unfortunately, activist judges and some local officials have made an aggressive attempt to redefine marriage in recent years. Since 2004, state courts in Washington, California, Maryland, and New York have overturned laws protecting marriage in those states. And in Nebraska, a federal judge overturned a state constitutional amendment banning same-sex marriage. These court decisions could have an impact on our whole nation. The Defense of Marriage Act declares that no state is required to accept another state's definition of marriage. If that act is overturned by activist courts, then marriages recognized in one city or state might have to be recognized as marriages everywhere else. That would mean that every state would have to recognize marriages redefined by judges in Massachusetts or local officials in San Francisco, no matter what their own laws or state constitutions say. This national question requires a national solution, and on an issue of such profound importance, that solution should come from the people, not the courts. A constitutional amendment will put a decision that is critical to American families and American society in the hands of the American people, which is exactly where it belongs. Democracy, not court orders, should decide the future of marriage in America. I mean, what more do you need? What more do you need? Has he even made a public apology for saying that? That he wanted a constitutional amendment so same-sex couples could never, ever be able to get married? Has he ever apologized for that? Has he ever at least even showed like an ounce of remorse for all of the Iraqis that he murdered? Both directly and indirectly? I don't think so. This is what American politics has devolved into, where because we dislike Donald Trump, we're going to normalize and rehabilitate the destructive legacy of a murderer who should be rotting in prison right now. The fact that he is free, let me repeat, the fact that he has freedom shows that America does not take human rights seriously because he should be in prison where murderers belong. It's a big club. And you ain't in it. You and I are not in the big club. By the way, it's the same big club they used to beat you over the head with all day long when they tell you what to believe. All day long, beating you over the head in their media, telling you what to believe, what to think, and what to buy. The table is tilted, folks. The game is rigged.